Hi, my name is Andromeda Ture. I'm really excited to be here today in Seneca Village at Central Park West and 85th Street. I am the artistic director for this year's Juneteenth celebration. As many of you may know, there was a community right here in Seneca Village of African Americans. This was here before the park even existed and we wanna help bring their stories to life through this celebration. It's been a really great opportunity to partner with the Central Park Conservancy for this celebration because the landscape tells so much of their story. So at each one of the different sites, we let the physical environment guide the artistic expression in bringing the stories of this community to life. The first thing you experience is you are welcomed into Seneca Village is the sound of African drummings. And you cannot get more traditional than Abdu Mboup. He comes from Senegal playing the kora, which is an African instrument that is often played by griots, who are the storytellers and the history keepers of African communities. We brought him here to share culture with you and also to imagine that the people that lived here in Seneca Village might might have still kept that connection to their culture and still had the drumming as a part of their daily life and their community here. So Andrew Williams was one of the first landowners here in Seneca Village and he did shoe shine. And so when we thought about how he might have transformed this space, it was shoes. And so we brought his story to life through tap dance. We have an incredible tap artist and actor, DeWitt Fleming Jr. And we're really excited to share his story because the land that he owned here gave him the right to vote. And that was really powerful and it still is. Another one of the themes we have is education. In Seneca Village, they had a school for colored children. And the simple landscape of a playground, which you find at this location, helps to tell that story. There is still a playground at the site where the school was in those days. And so we bring that school to life with beautiful performance of banjo and African storytelling. And that idea in creating this experience was to imagine how the teachers might have shared and educated the students. And so I would imagine that in a place like Seneca Village, the teachers would be sharing some African storytelling to the children so they could find pride in themselves and in their culture. For the community portion of the program, we really leaned into bringing a community feeling to life. Here we're at the site where a church existed and the church was not just a religious foundation, it was an anchor for the community where they came and gathered together for social events as well. There's an incredible poet named Marilyn Nelson. I had been gifted her book, My Seneca Village, years ago, and she did such a beautiful job of imagining and bringing stories of what African-American communities are like and might have been like here in Seneca Village. And we have some dancers to also help visually stimulate and give a visual representation to her poetry as well. We're here in Summit Rock, which is the highest point in Central Park and a place that during the time of Seneca Village, there were no buildings around. So from this point in the park, they could see far across the river onto New Jersey and across the east side as well. It was most likely a place that they came to reflect. So that's where we're starting with a journey through reflection, loss commemoration, and celebration at this site with four incredible artists. We have sculptures by Miles Nurse, an incredible metalwork artist, and his sculptures are dancing ancestors that help you to imagine them still being in this physical space. And what we love about his artwork is it has a lot of negative space, so you can still take in the natural environment of Summit Rock while you're viewing his pieces. The musical element is three instrumentalists, beginning with reflection by Akua Dixon, who is a cellist and composer, presenting a work called Africa, Africa. And that is really going to bring us into joy to round out the full experience here of Juneteenth. We're here in the empowerment segment near Tanner Spring, and one of the things that I found most inspiring when I started to learn about Seneca Village's history was that there were actually black women in the 1800s that owned their own property here. And I thought, wow, those must have been some really incredible women. And we wanted to try to bring them to life. We have three incredible performers, 
Mickey Braden, who is a vocalist and actress, Carla Cook, a vocalist and composer, and Angie Swan, who is a guitarist. And the three of them discussed some topics that they might have been discussing during Seneca Village days that are still affecting the black community today and sharing joyous song and traditional African-American music through blues and jazz and spirituals as well. One of the many reasons I feel it's so important for organizations like Central Park Conservancy to share this history and be upfront with it is because it normalizes the telling of the true history of our nation. And the more people have understanding and respect for different cultures, the more we can really come together as a United States.